I want to say something because I think about this a lot. The people who try to discourage you from doing this, it's funny to me because at some point somebody had to try this for the first time, right? How did they know they would ever be good at it? They got out there and they tried it. So I've been working really hard on getting this car straight. A lot of block sanding. Pretty much the entire car has been block sanded other than the bottom down here in this one spot that I forgot. But other than that, everything block sanded out really good on the car. The hood, as you can see, these hoods are very uneven uh, from the factory whenever you buy them. For the most part, this car should be pretty straight whenever it's all said and done. But we won't know for sure until we get this thing cleaned up and see what we're working with. So right now, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead, blow this thing off and do some quick pressure washing. Now, as you can see, we have the tail lights out, so I don't wanna pour water up in this thing. There's a few little tricks and tips that I wanna show you guys a little later on on how to remove your door handles and your door locks. I know a lot of you guys have done that, but there's a lot of newcomers to the game and we need to go ahead and get that information out there. So let's go ahead and blow this thing off and see what we got. So this is carbonized gray metallic. This is the new Ford color and it is freaking stunning. So what I'm gonna do is just move it around in the different lighting for you guys so that you can see it. But it's just a beautiful color, at least in my opinion anyway. Real quick, I do wanna show you some of the other color options that I was looking at. The top color is a Toyota uh, gray. I can't remember the name of it. And the bottom is Porsche carbon steel gray and it's a very pretty color but it just didn't turn out the way i wanted it uh it looks a little too green for me it's not really my taste but just for reference between the two colors definitely a difference so i wanted to go with this because this is more of a um how can i say this more like a liquid metal right it just transitions and flows it doesn't have a lot of big flake to, to get the job done. All right, let's go ahead and get to today's video. A few things that I wanna cover because I'm not gonna continue with this series of doing body work and things like that. Uh, I've actually already done that before, so if you guys would like to, you can go back and check out some of the videos that I did on the uh, Calypso and things like that. There's not a lot of body work left to do to this car. The main issue was right there in the back panel, uh, here and here gotten most of that straightened out I think we're gonna be pretty good I may need to tweak it a little bit more but one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about is when to take your car apart obviously you guys see all this overspray here and overspray here and there's even a little bit on the windows so the reason why I'm not taking the quarter glass out of the car is I was driving it trying to tune on it trying to get the car to run as good as I could and I needed this thing to be functional and go up and down the road I have new quarter glass that's the reason why i don't really care so much if those get you know a little bit of overspray on them now these windows i should have honestly went ahead and, and take this off but kind of heat of the moment i didn't think about it and got overspray on them. guys lacquer thinner on a rag will take this off i prefer to use that method over a clean razor blade because a razor blade will still scratch your windows if you're not careful so you know this is what i recommend if you're gonna be doing body work on your car, think ahead of time. Are you ready to put the car up yet? Like store it away and literally just do body work. If the answer is yes, then go ahead and take your quarter windows out, take your mirrors off, all this stuff off, and get the car stripped down as much as you can. Now, it may be beneficial to you to leave your bumpers and everything on the car so that you can sand it all at one time, or you may prefer to take them off. Either way, it's fine. What will get you though, is if you take your car apart too quick, and then you realize you need it, right? Uh, you realize that, man, it's gonna be a month before I can get the paint or something's come up and I can't get the booth I was gonna get or whatever the case may be, your car is pretty much in op once you start taking it apart. And a paint job can go on for a long period of time. Like, don't think that you're just gonna probably strip this thing down one weekend and then the next weekend have it ready to paint. Sure, you can do that, but a lot of times it doesn't work that way and you get yourself in a mess. So, like I said, ask yourself the question, 
am I okay with leaving my car for a month, two months possibly, uh, stripped down and not being able to drive it? There again, if the answer is no, leave as much stuff on the car as possible and start taping things off. There's a chance that you'll have to retape your car up to about three different times before it's actually finished and ready to paint. And I do recommend if you're gonna be doing body work and sanding and you're gonna have things taped off, before you move over into paint, it's best just to go ahead, pull all the tape off and retape it. It doesn't take that long to do, especially if you take your quarter windows out. That's another thing, guys. There's nine nine millimeters back here behind these quarter glasses. They're easy to get off. You don't even have to pull the whole interior out of the car. I recommend that you pull those things out because trust me, you're, you're gonna be ahead of the game if you do that. With all that being said, let's go ahead and put some water on this thing and blow all this crap off of it. Again, you can use the technique that we talked about before for checking straightness. So overall, I think the car looks pretty good i think at this point the best thing to do is there again check to make sure that all the low spots are taken care of i think there are still a couple i, I forgot that i had some filler here and there's a low spot right here that i need to get other than that though i think the car just needs to be primed and then wet sanded out with some 500 grit and i think this thing is going to be ready to spray it should be pretty straight for the most part so what i'm going to do now is show you guys how to take your door handles out and your door locks super easy when well, i say super easy the door handles can be a little tricky so you want to start by obviously removing your door panel right here is a metal tab that actually holds your door lock assembly in and all you have to do is pry this tab out it can be a little tricky sometimes it'll get caught but just take your time with it it out like that so up inside the door here is where the door lock is and the door handle this is actually pretty easy to do there's a little tab in here and all you're going to do is pull the rod out of that tab just reach in like this find your door lock tab and pull out now your door lock will come out uh, that rod just pops into this slot right here that's it now the door handle itself is a little tricky mine actually has bolts in it so as you can see in there most of the time you're going to have rivets unless somebody has replaced it and most people just put bolts back in it i actually recommend you put bolts in it because trying to use a rivet gun can cause all sorts of problems so that looks like a 10 millimeter let me go ahead grab one let's see if we can get this thing out This one's a little more tricky to get to because of the angle. You really need a swivel for this. Okay, now that you've got your bolts out, you can see, I don't know if you can see, there's a rod inside of there that just pushes up into the lock. So the best thing to do is pull the rod down and then pull the door handle up and there it is it's out let me show you one more trick because you're going to need to know this so grab yourself a fairly large zip tie pull your rod to you so that you can see it and we're going to wrap a zip tie around this thing but pay attention to where you're wrapping it you want to wrap it right on the horizontal line right there 
okay just like that cinch it up tight now all you're going to do is feed it through this hole just like that and now with your zip tie you can still open your door all you do is pull down grab your zip tie put your thumb on it pull down and then whenever you get ready to paint the car just take the zip tie push it up like that i do highly recommend that you guys take your door handles uh, your door locks all of your trim off these cars it's all very easy to get off it's going to give you a better cleaner job trust me you don't want workarounds when it comes to this stuff the quarter windows i'll probably take out uh, in the next few days or so real quick before we go i want to talk to you guys about how we're going to paint this car now i have mentioned several times about uh, painting in the garage in the shop something like that i'm going to try to do it this time and what i mean by that is we're going to take two 12 by 12 tents and we're going to put them in here together we're going to butt them up long ways like this we're going to take some lightweight uh plastic bisqueen whatever you want to call it and we're going to wrap it around these tents pretty tightly we're going to cut a couple slots in it throw some filters throw an exhaust fan in this thing and we're going to try to paint this car in the shop if we can catch the weather right which we should as long as it's not humid it should turn out good that's the plan anyway but there is a chance that we always just take it over to my dad's house it really just kind of depends i don't want to put him in a bind he's always got cars in and out of his shop so uh we'll see how all that goes anyway guys stay tuned because we're gonna be painting this thing i don't know here in the next probably three weeks to a month something along those lines all right so one other thing before i end this video so i've been reading some of the comments uh from some of the previous videos and i see a lot of negativity and a lot of times i see this negativity coming from people who work in body shops and that you know do body work for a living people will tell you that you can't do this okay i've been told before i don't know what i'm doing that it'll never look right it'll never be straight what i want to remind you guys of is you can do this okay not everybody is cut out for this sure there's a lot of you that know better than to even attempt this you know you know it's just not for you and that's fine i'm trying to talk to the guys that have wanted to do this and are curious about it uh the diy guys that pretty much nothing's off limits right this is for you to try i want to say something because i think about this a lot the people who try to discourage you from doing this, it's funny to me because at some point somebody had to try this for the first time, right? How did they know they would ever be good at it? They got out there and they tried it. There's enough information out there on the internet now for you to where you're getting a lot of the knowledge that they got in school. Now granted, it's not the exact same thing as hands-on experience from being in school and I'm not knocking anybody that ever went to school. That, that's good, but what I'm saying is there's so much good information out there from known sources. You don't have to follow my stuff, that's fine. Listen to me when I tell you don't listen to the people who try to discourage you. Don't do that, don't listen to them. None of that matters. You get out there and prove the world wrong. That's the mentality that you should have. If you fail at it, it's fine. It's like I always say, no good book was ever written about somebody who didn't have their trials and tribulations. If they didn't have their ups and downs, then where's the story? If you fail at it, then keep trying. It's okay. This car still has a lot of work that needs to be done. I'm not 100% that it's gonna be perfect. The issue I run into a lot is with my paintwork. Uh, we don't have a professional booth. Um, you know, We have a booth that my dad built at his house and it works really good, but it's not gonna be perfect, right? It doesn't matter, guys. Stop thinking that your stuff has to be perfect because somebody's gonna nitpick it to death. It is what it is, guys. There all, there's always going to be people to do that. You leave one little imperfection in your paint, and there's somebody out there to find it. So don't worry about them. Get out there. Do things for yourself. I'm telling you, try it. It's okay. If you fail at it and you can't do this type work, it is what it is, guys. I'm not going to laugh at you. I'm going to commend you for at least trying it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up.